All right, what's good, guys? It's your boy King in here from uh, Team Victory Star, and we're back here today uh, doing another profile. Uh, this one is going to be on Yan Mega Vespaquin because I feel like this deck is a, a great archetype, um, even after Karen. Um, I just think that the way you play the deck um, is immensely changed. So I want to go ahead and jump on into the deck. I feel pretty confident with the list that I currently have been testing with, so I don't feel like sh I, I feel like I could share you guys or share with you guys a, at least a, a valid list that's worth testing. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Our Pokemon lineup, we're playing four copies of Yanma. This is the only legal Yanma right now in standard. Um, it has Scout, which for one colorless you make your opponent reveal their hand, and then for three colorless you do 40 damage. Yep, that's <laughs> it's something interesting, I guess. Uh, there is one important thing. Uh, it does have 70 HP, which is nice, and resistance to fighting is meh in this format, and it's meh when it's weak to lightning also. Um, just something, little factors to point out. Uh, we're mainly going to be playing it so we can get into this guy. We're playing four copies of Yon Mega. Yon Mega has the ability Sonic Vision, which states that if you have exactly four cards in your hand, you ignore all energy effect or energy costs for the uh, attacks. And so you basically are attacking for zero energy um, if you have four cards in your hand, which is really, really good. And the attack, um, Assault Boom does 50. And then if you have, a, or if your opponent's active has a tool on it, you're doing 70 more damage. This is very solid. Uh, really, really important to note. You're potentially doing 120 uh, for zero energy. And you also have Free Retreat, which is really cool. We got Mega. That's why I really like it. We're also playing two copies of the break. Um, Yamega Break has the attack uh, Barrier Break, which does 100 damage for three colorless energy, and uh, you ignore any additional effects, uh, weakness, resistance, and any other effects on the opponent's uh, Pokemon, which is pretty solid. It's kind of like a shred uh, that Hydreigon has, which is really, really good. Uh, next up, the backup attacker. We're playing four copies of Ves or four copies of blah, blah, blah. four copies of Combi and four copies of Vespaquin. I was getting a little ahead of myself there, but a four-four Vespaquin line is really effective in this deck. I'm pretty sure you all know what Vespaquin does. It has 90 HP, free retreat, and two attacks. Beer Revenge is its main attack, but Intelligence Gathering isn't a bad attack either. Intelligence Gathering does 10 damage. You draw until you have six cards in your hand. It's not bad if you're in a late game like Bind, in my opinion. Uh, but B Revenge is the main attack you're going to be using like 95% of the time. Uh, it does 20 plus 10 for each Pokemon in your discard pile, which adds up progressively as the game goes goes on. No, we don't. Or we've carried in the format. This kind of changes the deck just because of the fact that you're now instead. Of attacking uh, Yon Mega late or early game and Vespaquin late game, you're now forced to kind of like pivot between both of them throughout the entire game. So like you switch it up. So you have, you're attacking with Yon Mega at first, and then Vespaquin, Yon Mega, Vespaquin, Yon Mega, Vespaquin, so on and so forth, until you win or lose the game. Um, I feel like you have to play kind of more aggressive now because of the fact that Karen's out, uh, which is kind of annoying. Because sometimes you want to lay back and be able to potentially watch what your opponent does and then respond to that as opposed to being hyper offensive and just praying that your opponent doesn't have like a counter. <laughs> That's the uh, the main Pokemon lineup that we're playing. We're also playing four copies of Unknown. Unknown has the Farewell Letter ability which states that um, if it's on your bench you may discard it. Uh, it does not count as a knockout and if you do you draw a card um, which is pretty solid. It gets Pokemon into this card and you're getting card value out of it, which is really good. Uh, three Klefki. This is particularly for my meta. There's a decent pool of Megas um, in the in my meta. Um, if you don't think there's much Megas in the game, you could potentially play base, or Bursting Balloon over this spot instead. Uh, but Klefki, in my opinion, is a little bit more effective because of the fact that Megas do tend to have a, a hard time countering Klefki unless they play like some sort of Hex Maniac or Garb and it's a Pokemon worst case scenario you can discard either with an unknown to throw two in the discard or you can 
just simply attach it so that way your opponent can't hit you, um, which is really, really nice. And then last but not least, we're also playing three copies of Shaman EX because I feel like three is really, really viable in this deck. Uh, you're going to be wanting to draw more aggressively, as I stated earlier, through your deck. Um, it also, you worst case scenario, if you don't need it, you can throw it away. So you guys go, that's the Pokemon lineup. We're playing a whopping 28 Pokemon. It's pretty, pretty nice. I like it a lot. I think it's a, a great count. Really in any Vespaquin deck, 28 is kind of like a pretty solid number overall. It doesn't matter what format it really is. Uh, anyways though, on to the items. We're playing one special charge. Special charge lets you get back DCEs. Uh, this isn't so useful for uh, Yamega, but it is very useful for your Vespaquins if you're playing on attacking with the multiple times. Also, it makes uh, throwaways off of Sycamores less painful because you know that this card is in your deck. Uh, unless it's obviously prized, but just it's a solid one of the play. Uh, two Revitalizer because it's a grass deck, and in my opinion, every grass deck should now play like one Revitalizer. Um, it's very, very solid. Getting back two grass Pokemon that you can insta play down means that you're burning basically a card out of your hand. And in return, you're maybe doing 20 less damage if you were planning on attacking with Vespaquin, I guess. But Revitalizer is just so good. I really think it's necessary in this deck. I love playing two uh, because you're able to potentially throw one early game away. Uh, throw away. Out. I can't English today. I really cannot. Uh, you can pick or you could potentially throw one away early game and then still have one late game to use, which is really, really important to note. We're also playing through Trainer's Mail. Uh, Trainer's Mail is like one of the best cards in this format. It makes it so it's less likely for you to dead draw, which is really, really good. I love this card. Um, the original list I was testing with had two, but I actually made room for a third one because I felt like it needed to be in here just because... Um, Sometimes you do dead draw, and it kind of sucks, and so you can try to spell into a supporter, and then you're kind of okay, um, pretty much. And then last but not least, we're playing the standard 4 Ultra Ball and 4 VS Seeker. Um, Verse Seekers, the Reeves are supporters, and Ultra Ball is, like, basically the best way to get Pokemon into this card now, because Battle Compressor is gone, so. There's the item count. We're playing uh, 14 items, I believe, because 8... Yep, uh, 14, unless my basic math is wrong, <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure it's 14. And then on to our supporters, stadiums, and energy. Um, so very first thing is we're going to be, we're playing uh, four copies of Professor Sycamore. Uh, Sycamore is like the best supporter in the game. Uh, so playing four copies of this guy is really, really clutch. Um, this is like the other best way in the format right now that we have to discard Pokemon. If we clump into a bunch of Pokemon in our hand, we can just simply sick a more ball away. You get more damage value off of Vespa Quinn, so you're drawing seven cards, which is pretty tight. In my opinion... Uh, next up, we're playing two copies of N, because N is like the second best draw card in the entire format. It also can potentially disrupt your opponent, depending on what their hand is. Sometimes you could end your opponent into a dead hand. Sometimes you could end them out of a dead hand. Um, most of the time, you're mainly just going to get like a neutral hand for neutral hand exchange, um, usually on both sides, unless your hand was dead. In which that case you're like, oh yes, I'm so happy I played Ed. <laughs> it's, it's pretty solid. It's really good for late game because what you're able to do is you're able to end your opponent in like one or two. And then you can just apply pressure with Vespaquin and two-shot potentially whatever they have in the active. And if you they, they don't have like a Lysander or a Karen or something to stop it, then you're pretty much going to win the game. Now because Yonmega's ability states that... If it has four cards, then you can attack for zero energy. Um, in my opinion, it's really, really viable to play Judge in this deck. Judge states that both you and your opponent shuffle your hands back into your deck 
and each draw four cards. Um, when, before N was reprinted back in Fates Collide, Judge was like the previous N. You had to judge your opponent turn one potentially. And this, in my opinion, is even more disruptive than N because your opponent is probably getting less cards than what they had because they probably had five or six in their hand and now they're stuck to four. And potentially, they're pretty much kind of relying on their top deck um, if you judge them into something like extremely gross, which is the goal of the deck, but also it's just simply because if you can't play it on your hand but have a Versus Seeker in your hand, you could just verse Seeker for Judge and just play Judge. And if you don't play down any cards, you can attack with Yad Mega for zero energy, which is really good. We're playing one Life Sander only because of the fact that I can't fit more than one in here. I would love to fit in two, um, but the reason why I'm not playing two is mainly because of, uh, mainly because of this card, which is Giovanni's Scheme. Um, Giovanni's scheme is a supporter that has two effects. You can either choose to do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, or you can draw until you have five cards in your hand. Uh, majority of the time, you're going to be doing the plus 20, just because, especially now that Karen is a card, uh, you need as high of output as you could reach um, to potentially two-shot your opponent, in my opinion. So, Giovanni's scheme is very important. Uh, if you can't, or if you don't find uh, Giovanni's scheme to be effective, easily can either cut it for a second Lysander, or even potentially a fourth Trader's Bell. Um, in my opinion, I don't think you need the fourth Shaman, or I don't think you need like a uh, fourth Klefki or something. Even if your meta is extremely mega, um, in my opinion. Next up, we're playing four copies of Forest of Giant Plants. This basically allows you to break the rules of evolution and evolve whatever you want, which is really, really good. Um, because you could potentially attack the very first turn of the game if you play down your hand down to four and you're able to get a Yon Mega in the active. You can pretty much go ham with your uh, your attacks. So shout outs to Force the Giant Plants for letting us do that. And then last but not least, this is gotta be expected, you're playing 4 DCE, I know it was hard to tell at first, but 4 copies of Double Colorless Energy is really important to play in the deck uh, because Vespa Quinn needs energy to attack, whereas Yon Mega potentially doesn't uh, if they have 4 cards in your hand and there isn't like a Garb or a Hex that's, uh, that's happening. So there you guys go, that's the, uh, that's the list. Um, tell me what you guys think of it. If you enjoy it, please give it a like, favorite rating, comment, subscribe. Um, also, this is another kind of new way I've tried showing off the decks. I've kind of broke it off into sections as opposed to like trying to list out the entire thing on my little map. Um, so if you guys liked this way as opposed to the previous way I did with the Volcanian EX deck, which is I had every Pokemon spread out over here. Every trainer and supporter was like spread out in like this section, and then the rest was like your stadium slash energy kind of thing. Um, so it was all on the the mat as opposed to me breaking it off into three different sections. So you have to view what's in the trainers, what's in the supporters, what's in the Pokemon, all that stuff. So there you guys have it. Uh, that's the deck. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please stay tuned for more videos and potentially pack openings to come. By the time you're seeing this video, I believe we actually just did a, or I did a pack opening uh, for the channel because it's been so long and I think some of our fans were actually requesting for us to do more packs. And uh, if that video gets a lot of views, I may shell out more money to buy another somewhat expensive thing, like an Elite Trainer box um, of the new set is something I had in mind, just like that. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all later.